Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers, uh, very large exponential numbers. We have 100 to the power 100 and 101 to the power 99. We're going to figure out which number is larger. And I'll be presenting two methods. We're going to talk about a couple interesting facts about these kinds of numbers. Let's start the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to kind of look at the ratio of these two numbers, starting with this one. So like 101 to the power 99 divided by 100 to the power 100. We're going to be looking at this ratio. And by the way, uh, if you're comparing two numbers and you're looking at a quotient, then you either want to get something greater than 1 or less than 1. Because if, and obviously this is true for positive numbers, but if a over b is less than 1 and a and b are both positive, this just implies a is less than b. Otherwise, if a over b is greater than 1, then a is greater than b. Obviously, if you don't want this to be 1, because that means a and b are equal. Make sense? Cool, cool. So let me write the other one so we're complete. All right. So that's how you look at ratios. If you're looking at the differences, then you want the difference to be positive or negative. All right, cool. So we want to compare this to 1, in other words. So let me write this expression. And I'll probably have to rewrite it here because I don't have room. So let's do it this way, right here, OK? So I want this number to be either less than 1 or greater than 1, OK? Let's go ahead and write it as 101 to the power 100 divided by 100 to the power 100. So we can get the same exponent, that's the motivation. But that just means I have to divide by 101, which I can do by multiplying by the reciprocal, right? Now, since do, these two expressions have the same exponent, we can use the laws of exponents or laws of exponents or properties of exponents. If you have a to the n divided by b to the n, you can write it as a over b to the power n. Make sense? Cool. Now, what are we going to do with this? We're going to write these together. So 101 over 100 to the power 100. And that is multiplied by 1 over 101. OK? And let's go ahead and split up the 101. Let's write it as 100 plus 1 over 100 to the power 100 times 101. And then we can basically split this into two fractions and write it as 1 plus 1 over 100. Hopefully this makes more sense. Hopefully you you get to see what I'm doing. And this is what I get. So my goal was to get something that looks like 1 plus 1 over n to the power n. And we're actually going to look at this stuff in a different way as well with my second approach. But uh, this is a very special type of expression, and hopefully you are familiar with this if you've done logarithms and even a little bit of calculus. So here's what's going to happen from this point on, and I, I'm going to make an assumption, which uh, I'm not going to prove because I also want to talk about the second method. Uh, but uh, we talked about these in other videos. Hopefully, if I can find the link, uh, I'll try to share this here and down below. Okay? So here's my assumption. Uh, I'm going to assume that 1 plus 1 over 100 to the power 100 is less than 3. Make sense? OK. Now, uh, in general, this is what we can say. If you have something like 1 plus 1 over n to the power n, this expression is actually going to be always between 2 and 3 for positive integers n. The reason why we have an equality is because if n is equal to 1, then we get 1 plus 1 over 1 to the power 1, which is equal to 2. But it's always less than 3. And actually, if you look at the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the power n, you're going to get e, which is Euler's number from here. And we can prove this very easily by setting this equal to like y and then take the log, natural log of both sides, find the limit as n approaches infinity of y, and then whatever that is, you're going to put it e to the power of that, but you're going to find that this limit approaches 1, so it's going to be e to the power 1. Okay, to keep a long story short, I kind of really quickly summarize the process there, but you can definitely look it up. It's an interesting limit. It comes up a lot, uh, especially with uh, compound interest. If you compound your money infinitely many times, <laughs> 
obviously that's not going to happen, but you basically get in one year uh, E times the amount of money you put in. Though, if you put a dollar, you're going to get uh, E dollars. That would be really cool, right? Anyways, so what does this give us? This guy is less than three, right? So let's see what that gives us. So we got this expression right here. So since this is less than three, this is going to be less than three times one over 101. And obviously this is less than one. That's important. Remember, we were trying to get less than one or, or greater than one. And why is this less than one? Because that's a small number. Come on, three over 101 is going to be less than, oops, I put a hundred. 3 over 101 is actually going to be even less than 300, which is 0 0.03. Okay, cool. So that implies the following. I started off with something like this, and we happen to find that it's less than 1. So let's go ahead and write it. 101 to the 99 divided by 100 to the power 100 is less than 1. Since uh, both the top and the bottom numbers are positive, we can go ahead and multiply or cross multiply, we get 101 to the 99 is less than 100 to the power 100. In other words, our larger number is this one. Oops, I thought I changed the color, but I guess it didn't go through. This is going to be our larger number. Make sense? I hope it does. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method, because second method is going to be awesomer. OK, you'll decide. So I'm going to compare 101 to the 99 versus 100 to the power 100, right? It's not like this, by the way. Let me tell you. We're not comparing 101 to the 99 and 99 to the 101. That's a different story, right? That's when we have the base and the exponent interchange. This is different. So anyways, I, I'm going to start with this number and use, guess what? The binomial theorem. Yes, a lot of times we're comparing uh, exponential numbers, we use binomial theorem. OK, let's go ahead and work it out. And then we're going to write the put the conclusion here at the end, if I remember. <laughs> OK, so this is going to be if, uh, if you use the binomial theorem, you're going to get 100 to the power of 99 and then 99 choose one. I'm not writing 99 choose zero because it's just one times 100 to the power of 98. And I'm not writing powers of one because they're just one. Right. So let's just simplify this times 100 to the power 97, so on and so forth. Hopefully you are familiar with the binomial theorem. We're going to have this guy in the middle, 100 to the power 49. That's usually the largest number. And then plus dot, dot, dot. You know, we're going to have 99 choose 98 to the power <laughs> times 100. And finally, we're going to have 99 choose 99, which is actually 1. OK, cool. That is going to be the expression. And here's what happens. 99 choose 50, by the way, is approximately 5 times 10 to the power 28, which is 5 times 10, 100 to the power 14. And guess what? That's actually less than 100 to the power 50. OK, that's kind of like an interesting thing, right? But anyways, so here's what happens. We actually get each of these terms, and by the way, how many terms are there in the expansion of 101 to the power 99 is always n plus 1. So we have 100 terms. Make sense? And each of these terms, actually, is going to be less than 100 to the power 99. Of course, with the exception of the first term, which is equal, but all the other terms are less, so the sum is going to be what we want. So notice that this expression right here, 99 choose 1, is less than 100. Therefore, uh, this product is going to be less than 100 to the power 99. In other words, each of these terms, like, uh, like I said earlier, this is less than or equal to, right? And then this guy here, 99 choose 1 times 100 to the power 98, is less than 199, dot, dot, dot. We're going to multiply all of these expressions, and this is what we're going to get. Okay? From here, we're going to be getting 100 plus 1 to the power 99, with 100 terms, is actually going to be less than 100 times 100 to the power 99, because each of these is less than 100 to the power 99. And this is equal to 100 to the power 100, which tells you 101 to the power 99 is less than 100 to the power 100. Let's go back here, and we're going to go ahead and, I think I said I was going to write the conclusion here. 
and this is actually going to give you which is less than 100 to the power 100. Therefore, our larger number is going to be this one. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.